Well, praise the Lord. Here we are for another great Faith Builders broadcast. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us for this edition. Uh, we're so excited about uh, the things that God is doing uh, uh, in the lives of His people. And uh, we want to look at some things from the Word of God today concerning this subject of refusing the care. Refusing the care. Uh, some years ago, uh, the Lord spoke to me and He said to me, He said, cares and anxieties are one of the primary doors the enemy uses. And He used this phrase, He used this phrase to weasel His way into people's lives. And He said to me, the main effort the enemy is involved in is trying to get you over into care. And once that's accomplished, the door is open to whatever else he wants to bring into your life. And he said, no matter the circumstance, your job is to refuse the care. And so ultimately, I ended up ministering a, a series uh, of the same name, Refusing the Care, which uh, turned into the book uh, that's our offer uh, this month on refusing the care. In Luke 21 and verse 34, Jesus makes a statement. And he says, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. And then he says, and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. So Jesus says one of the things that I have to be on guard against and that we have to be on guard against as believers was the cares of this life. Now this, this is so interesting to me. Because he uses the, the words, lest your hearts be overcharged, and he says with surfeiting. Well, surfeiting is a word that, that literally means, in its, in its uh, uh, base context, uh, uh, overeating. It means to overindulgence. But what it can mean is an overemphasis on self, and an overindulgence in self. And then he says, surfeiting drunkenness and cares. And I think it's interesting that Jesus put the carrying of care in the same context with an overemphasis on self and drunkenness. Now that's interesting to me. So there has to be a reason that he did that. The Woos Bible says the anxieties pertaining to the affairs of this life. The anxieties pertaining to the affairs of this life. The 20th century New Testament says that what will happen is that your minds will be dulled. All right, your minds will be dulled. Notice it says, uh, uh, and your hearts be overcharged. Your, your mind will be dulled. So living a life full of care and a full of care lifestyle it dulls the mind. It causes you to feel like you're walking around in a fog. You know, when, when you start worrying about things and you start carrying the care. Now, understand what I mean by this. I'm not saying there aren't things that may come up in your life that cause you concern, that you have to deal with. Uh, I'm not talking about being irresponsible and not paying attention. There's a difference between carrying, uh, uh, carrying the care and being responsible uh, where concerns are. Here's the issue. When you live a worried, full of care lifestyle, it dulls the mind. All right. In other words, you can't think straight. It causes you to feel like you're walking around in a fog. And ultimately what that does is it makes a person drunk with care. I've run into people before. And they were so worried and so anxious and so full of care. They would tell me, Pastor, I can't even think straight. I, I can't even think straight because I've got so much pressure or I've got so much uh, that I'm worried about. Now, I'm not making light of circumstances that people may go through. But what I am emphasizing is the way that we respond to it. Everything that you see in the world today. It either has, it either has a, a, a power over you or it has no power over you dependent upon how you respond to it. All right, And, I, and I'm talking in the mental arena. There, there are people that are so focused 
on all of the negative in the world and it worries them so much and they carry so much care of it that their life revolves around that and they basically walk around in a fog all day. Well, Jesus made the statement. He said, take heed to yourself. In other words, that word take heed, it means pay attention. All right? Pay attention to yourself and make sure that you don't do this. All right? That I don't walk around with care. Carrying cares causes you to be distracted. All right? It dumbs you down spiritually. There are things, there are things that God could speak to people if they weren't carrying so much care. All right? Uh, there, there are times that uh, a person will be overwhelmed with concern, overwhelmed with their concerns, and somebody will be trying to help them, and it's like they can't hear what they're saying because they're so overwhelmed with the care and the worry. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus makes this statement, and this is what we commonly refer to as the parable of the sower, Mark 4 and verse 18. But remember that the context of this is the word being sown in the heart. Jesus said that the meaning of this parable in, in verse 14 was that the sower sows the word. And the different types of ground are the heart or the life of the person hearing the word. And notice he says, beginning in verse 18, And these are they which are sown on, uh, among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, notice, chokes the word, and it becomes unfruitful. It enters in, it chokes the word, and it, the word, becomes unfruitful. Matthew chapter 13 says of this same verse that he, the man, becomes unfruitful. So what does that tell us? If cares enter in and choke the word, the word quits producing fruit, and when the word quits producing fruit, I will quit producing fruit. All right? The word becomes unfruitful, and then the man becomes unfruitful. All right? Now, this is a preoccupied heart. Because notice, he says they were sown among thorns and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. The Greek says, things not listed here. All right? So it, the, the, the cares of this world is number one. The deceitfulness of riches, what does that mean? Thinking that money's your answer. It's not that money is bad. It's that you're deceived into thinking that more money is the answer. All right, And then the lust, the strong desire for other things that aren't listed here. And so this is a preoccupied heart. This is a heart that is preoccupied with, number one, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and other things that are not listed here. All right, This person is not necessarily malicious. They're not necessarily, uh, if we could say it this way, uh, bad or evil in their thinking. All right, evidently this was a believer because the word was sown in their hearts. But here's the point. They're simply overly concerned with the anxieties of everyday life. You know, coming out of the year that, that we have come out of, as of this taping, it's the year 2021. And having come out of the year 2020, all right, a, a, a year that probably none of us will ever forget, but here, here's the point. Coming out of that year, which was a year of anxiousness, a year where people did not know what they were going to do, uh, there, there were people that were worried about their jobs, worried about their health, and, and, and I want to be very plain, it, it, it was a tough year. There were people that, that suffered loss in that year, and, and I don't make light of that. But at some point, I remember uh, when it all became clear that there was going to be an issue in last year, uh, I had went to, uh, to visit my father in March. Uh, my, my dad got very sick in March, and I went uh, to visit them, 
and it was right around the, the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th of March. And if you'll remember, March 18th of 2020 was a Wednesday, and that is when uh, 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 everything we can say effectively shut down. Well, I was on the phone. I, I was in uh, uh, Kentucky with my parents, and I went back to the room, and I was talking to my wife, and we were, of course, having to make arrangements uh, for the church and for the ministry, and what do we do to keep things going, and, and, and we were, well, thank God we had our live stream platform and things in place, but our, our concern began to be for our people. How do we reach our people? What, how, do we, what, how do we keep them together? And we made the stand in that room with our staff, and, and this was our stand. We are not going to fear, and we're not going to worry. All right? I made the statement to my wife and to our staff. God knew that this was coming. All right? He knew that this was coming, and He has a plan for us. Now, the reason I'm saying that is I understood right away if I don't get a hold of this, my heart can become preoccupied with the wrong thing. My job is to stay in line with what God said to me and what God said to us through His Word. Now, there were marvelous opportunities that, ar that arose to be concerned, to be anxious, to carry the care. But we had to make the decision to keep letting the Word be what answered our situation. So we read here that this is a person with a preoccupied heart. The word for cares in this verse, Matthew 4, 18, the cares of this world, it's derived from a root word that means to be drawn in different directions. All right, to be drawn in different directions or to be distracted. It's, it's a synonym for the Greek word that means to worry. All right? So we could say here by the definition, words mean what they mean, by the definition in the Greek, the worries of this age, the worries of the time that they're living in. The enemy's job, what he desires is to distract you. I've told people for years, the enemy doesn't have to stop you completely, just get you distracted. And if he can begin to get you distracted, then what will happen? He'll draw you in different directions. All right? He'll draw you away from the answer. He'll draw you away from the victory. Hallelujah. Notice that the entering in of cares or worry chokes the word. And in this case, we see, notice it says, the word became unfruitful. So in this case... The word took root and was bearing fruit, and care and worry choked it out, and it became unfruitful because of carrying care. When situations or circumstances arise, and you're tempted to carry care, you've got to run to the word. The, the word is always the answer. What does the word say? What does the scripture say? When, when you read through the scriptures and you see different places where people were standing on the word, all right? Paul used the phrase in the book of Romans when he was discussing the righteousness which is by faith and the righteousness that comes by the law. And he was explaining to these people in the church in Rome that were arguing back and forth, you know, is, is it justification by faith or justification by the law? And he used Abraham as an example, and he made the statement. He says, what does the Scripture say? What does the Scripture say? And over and over again, around three times in Paul's writings, you see him answering these questions with, what does the Word say? When Jesus dealt with the people in his day, and he, he talked to the religious leaders, and they were upset with him because his disciples had had plucked some grain on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, you are in error because you do not know the Scriptures. You don't know the Scriptures. See, what does the Word say? Anything the Word asks me to do, the Word will empower me to do. 
Anything the Word asks me not to do, the Word will empower me not to do it. And so when we read in the Word of God not to be anxious about anything, He's not asking me to do that in my own power. He's saying, if you will follow through and you'll put faith in my Word, the Word will give you the power to do what I'm asking you to do. In the book of Luke, chapter 8. Hallelujah. The book of Luke, chapter 8. And uh, verse 14. And this is the same account, but notice, it says, And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth, and notice this, are choked with cares and riches. Now we know that that's the deceitfulness of riches. And notice, pleasures. Now think about that for a moment. So there's nothing wrong with pleasures. There's, there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life as long as the pleasure doesn't become the focus. Because see, here's, here's the issue. It doesn't have to be something wrong to get your focus. And if I get my focus off the Word, and I get my focus off of what God said, then I open the door for the cares that He's talking about. And it says, They go forth and are choked with cares and riches, pleasures of this life, and bring forth no fruit to perfection. No fruit to perfection. The Mount's translation says they do not bring forth fruit to maturity. They don't mature. Amen. So allowing cares causes a lack of maturity. One translation says, and that which fell into the thorns, these are those who heard and under, under the pressure of anxieties and wealth and pleasures of a materialistic life, as they go on their way are being choked and they are not bringing forth fruit to maturity. When you read through the scriptures, you find something out. That God expects believers to be fruitful and He expects them to be mature. The goal of the Christian life is maturity and bringing forth fruit. Hallelujah. Uh, for instance, Ephesians 4.12 says, to edify each other. Well, that means to build up in, in advancement. Uh, 1 Peter 2.2 2 says that you may grow. When you hear the word, you will grow. Hebrews 5.12 says, By this time you ought to be teachers, or you should have matured to the place that you can teach others. All right? See, carrying cares puts me in a position to not mature, to not grow the way that I should. That's one of the greatest enemies to growth and advancement, is the carrying of cares. Carrying of cares, carrying cares will stunt your spiritual growth because it gets my focus off of what my focus should be. It was the pressure of anxieties that caused the Word to be choked in Luke 8 and stop the production of mature fruit. The carrying and the pressure of anxieties that caused the Word to be choked and stop the production of mature fruit. Now understand, cares will come to everybody. Worry will try to enter into your life at some point. Whether it's about something you're currently facing, or something that you may face in the future, or just the possibility of facing something. Worry will try to enter your mind. All right? What I have to do is understand that when I start worrying over whatever it may be, ever how big or small, I open the door, I prop the door open for the enemy to bring other things worse with it. All right, Because it, it, it doesn't stop. When you start worrying about one thing, it will go to another thing. And it will go to another thing. I have an example. Uh, at our house... Uh, I had a, 
a, a banana tree, all right, a banana plant that was uh, uh, getting very big and spreading, and, and uh, it wasn't that, you know, I didn't think it was, was nice looking, but uh, they spread. And so uh, what I did was me and another uh, brother, we, we dug it up. And when we dug it up, of course, uh, there was a, a, a hole there. So we bought some topsoil in and, and filled it in. And then we were going to get some sod and resod that place. But the sod company uh, didn't have any sod, and so we had to wait. Well, every time it would rain and the water would run, it would wash away the topsoil. And I, began, I, I was thinking about that. Now, this is just a real elementary example. But then, the thought came to my mind, uh, yeah, if you don't fix that, it will do this, and then if it does that, it will do this. Now, now think about this. That is not a wrong or immoral thought. I, I, I do need to lay sod in that place, and I will. But here's the point. That's not a wrong or an immoral thought, but notice the trail. If you don't get that fixed, this could happen. And if that happens, this could happen. And, and before you know it, your mind can run over to, you're going to have foundation problems. You're going to have all these issues. Now, here's, here's the point. While that's not wrong or immoral, it takes my focus off what should be the main thing. And that's how the enemy will begin to do. Rather it's, rather it's worried about your finances, worried about your health, worried about your job, worried about your family, worried about any number of things. What's going to happen in the nation? What's going to happen in the world? Amen. Well, the Bible says this. The Bible says that we who have believed are kept by the power of God. We're kept by the power of God. Whatever is going on in the world, we are kept from it by the power of God because we are in the kingdom of God. The Bible says we are in the world, but we're not of the world. That, that means we do what we have to do. We take the precautions we have to take, but we don't fall over into the mindset that the world has that something's going to be destroyed or we're going to lose out or we're going to go under. Because that props the door open. Job said, the Bible says in the book of Job chapter 3, that the thing that Job greatly feared, the original Hebrew, Job says, I feared a fear, and what I feared came on me. Now that doesn't mean that we don't take precautions and we're not responsible. But it does mean this, that you do not allow yourself to be drunk with worry. You are kept by the power of God. You're kept by the Word of God. God will provide. Hallelujah. There's the story in the book of Luke, chapter 10, that I'm sure you're familiar with, where Jesus came and was ministering there at the house of Mary and Martha. And Martha, the Bible says, was encumbered, worried, excited about many things. And she came to Jesus and said, Ask Mary to help me. And Jesus said, Martha, you're worried, you're encumbered, you're, you're concerned about many things, but Mary has chosen that good part that will not be taken from her. Mary loved Jesus, she wanted to serve Jesus, but she made a decision not to be full of care and to receive the Word. Martha abandoned the Word at the surface of what, uh, at, the, at the expense. She, she, she was more concerned about her care, and she focused on that at the expense of the Word. And care caused Martha to have an attitude that moved her away from and caused her to miss the Word that would cause her to mature. Hallelujah. See, that was a good thing, wanting to serve Jesus. But Jesus said you shouldn't be overly concerned about that at the expense of what I'm saying. You know, I, I, I want to encourage you, when you get in the Word and you see what the Word says, you take that as absolute truth. This is what the Word says. When you go to your churches and you're hearing your pastor minister and you're hearing the minister 
uh, speak to you the Word of God. Your attitude must be, this is God speaking to me. And I'm not going to abandon the Word because of this. Stay with the Word of God. Hallelujah. And Philippians 4, 7 says that when we stop worrying about even one thing, that the peace of God that passes all power of comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I believe that God's ministered to you today from the Word of God, and I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit will help you guard your heart and your mind through Christ in the name of Jesus. Father, we just pray for your people. We pray, Father, that they would be uh, surrounded by your goodness, surrounded by your mercy, surrounded by your peace. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We so appreciate you joining us every week for the Faith Builders broadcast. And uh, all the information to contact us will be at the end of the program. We would love to hear from you and hear how this is blessing your life. So please remember, until we see you again next time, remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. Pastor Philip Steele's book, Refusing the Care, is available. Inside you will find biblical truth and simple insight to help you resist the worry and refuse the cares of everyday life. Through this much needed teaching, you can learn how to refuse worry and care and how faith provides a foundation to stand against anxiety and how to recognize wrong perceptions that allow cares to enter in your life. To order a copy of Refusing the Care, call us at 1-501-400-8797 or order online at buildfaith.net. With practical illustrations, Pastor Steele relates lessons he learned as the Lord revealed the danger of how allowing cares will prompt the door open to the enemy. You will be encouraged by this book as you learn how to refuse the care. To order your copy of Refusing the Care, call 1-501-400-8797 today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch live streams or watch messages again to build your faith anytime you desire with trusted teaching from pastors Philip and Michelle Still as well as guest ministers and special events on our YouTube channel. Subscribe today and be ready to hear what God has for you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.